JewishHistory.org presents Rabbi Beryl Wine's 5,000 Years of Jewish History. One video clip at a time. Clip number 16, Greek Influence and Alexander the Great. Whenever there are major changes in world events, it seems to impact the Jewish people particularly. Alexander the Great, the great Greek leader, conquers the Persian Empire, conquers most of the known world, and he comes to the land of Israel in about uh, 325 before the Common Era, just a few years before his death. There the Talmud tells us that he meets uh, Simon the Righteous, Shimon HaTzadik, and is so impressed by the visage of Shimon HaTzadik and by the personality uh, that he spares Jerusalem, he spares the temple, and so to speak, he continues on his way. Alexander will die two years later in 323, before the Common Era. The Jews remember Alexander. They made a commitment to him that all of the firstborn male children born during that year would be named Alexander. And that's how Alexander, a pure Greek name, enters the Jewish world. It became a standard Jewish name until our time. There are people today who are named Alexander, Sender. All of those names are derived from this event of Alexander's coming to the land of Israel. In addition, the Jews uh, said, we're going to revamp our calendar. We're going to date not only from the creation of the world as we do now, but we're going to date from the time of Alexander, from the time of the Greek conquests. Now the Jews fudged on this a little. This became what was known as Minyan Shtarot, the official date that was used in legal documents. And year one was the year 312 before the Common Era, which in Jewish tradition is exactly 1,000 years after the exodus from Egypt. And the Jews also now were subservient to the Greeks, they had to pay taxes, etc. And to a certain extent, Greek culture, certainly Greek names, filtered into the Jewish world. We find great rabbis who are named Antigone. And Greek became an, almost an accepted language. In the Mishnah, we find very many Greek words, vocabulary. For instance, the word afikoman, which in Greek means dessert, enters Jewish life and is part of the Seder services on Passover night throughout the Jewish world for the past uh, 1,800, 2,500 years. And many Greek words enter Jewish culture, enter Jewish society, and the Jews will now have to contend not only with the physical domination of the Greeks, but also with the cultural identity that they have to attempt to restore to themselves. Alexander dies. He leaves no successor, so there is a contest for succession. The southern kingdom, which included Egypt and North Africa, uh, Ptolemy, one of his great generals, becomes the emperor. In the northern kingdom, which included Syria, Turkey, Anatolia, well, there Seleucus becomes the emperor. Both of them were generals under Alexander the Great. Now they compete with each other. Now guess, my friends, which little country is lodged between the southern empire and between the northern empire. Naturally, it's the land of Israel, the kingdom of Judah, and therefore the Jews have to choose, so to speak, between Seleucus in the north and between Ptolemy in the south. The Jews always favored the Egyptian empire, always favored the Ptolemaic empire, but the northern kingdom 
always attempted to conquer Israel as use it as a buffer and as a base against the Ptolemaic Empire in the south. And this, my friends, brings us pretty much to the story of Hanukkah, a story which I'm going to share with you on the next segment of this series. Thanks again for watching. For more on Jewish history, go to jewishhistory.org.